I'm Marcia Winbeckler and I want to show you today how to use a great two-piece bottle mold that makes a three-dimensional bottle. And this particular one that I'm using is one that makes a slightly smaller bottle. So the size of it really lends itself well to making like a cooler cake, an uh, ice tub cake. It, you don't have to make a full set of life-size bottles. These are slightly smaller and they also take less ice malt that way. And here's some of the supplies we're going to be using today. Of course, we're going to be using the uh, two-piece mold here. And to hold that together, we're going to need some rubber bands. We're going to need some isomalt. And these are some of the pre-made sticks. I'm going to be using a little silicone measuring cup here to melt my isomalt sticks in. I also have a silicone spatula that I use to stir it. I will be using some of the vegetable oil spray and then most importantly is going to be the gloves um, that I'm going to wear to protect my hands. Isomalt is uh, very very hot and you wouldn't want to burn yourself and a silicone mat then to just to protect your counter surface. Okay to prepare the mold for making the sugar bottle I want to spray a little bit of the vegetable spray on my hands and just put a really thin coating of that inside the bottle mold and that just makes it release a little bit easier, less chance of cracking or breaking the sugar bottle. And there's a lip here so when you join the two pieces together uh, it seals it and keeps any of the sugar from leaking through so it just easily fits together like that. You can see the seam there. Then I'm going to take a rubber band I'm using a number 64 here. You can get a slightly wider one also, which is a number 84. And I'll put another one in the center and then one on the other end here. And it's as easy as that. You can see, and there's the pour hole where we're going to pour the sugar in. And I'm going to use about eight of the uh, isomalt sticks and add some food coloring. I'm going to make a brown bottle today. So I'll have about half of it left, but that let, lets me fill the mold at least half full and I get a little bit of less bubbles. So I just put the sticks in the microwave for about a minute and start the cooking process and then every stir them and then every 30 seconds stir and check on them uh, to see that they've melted. Now the first thing you need to do before taking the sugar out of the microwave is put on your gloves to protect your hands. So I've cooked it in the microwave for a minute and I uh, added my food color and you can use uh, paste or liquid color. A little bit of brown food color in there and you can see it's still kind of thick so I'm going to want it a little warmer than that. So I'm going to cook it on 30 second intervals now and after just 30 more seconds it comes out of there really bubbly and now it's all melted. Next what I do to kind of prevent air, big air bubbles in my bottle is I will put this in the regular oven that I have set at uh, 275 degrees and I leave it in there for 15 minutes and that lets uh, most of the bubbles kind of rise to the surface and it makes a perfect pouring temperature for the sugar. Okay, I have my sugar that I just took out of the oven. I let it set in there for 15 minutes so that in the air, most of the air bubbles could rise to the surface and pop so that I get a as bubble less of a bottle as I can. Then I'm just going to pour it down the center. You want to not shake it up uh, too much, so going straight down the center this pour hole on the mold. Then you'll, you can see that's about half full or so and then uh, the advantage of this mold being a translucent is I can see the areas that I have uh, covered here so I'm just going to roll it around real gently. Again I don't want to form any air bubbles and you can kind of see at the opening where it just sort of uh, comes up to the lip there. Don't let it pour out, but just in case you've got your silicone mat there so it uh, won't hurt your counter or surface. And once I've got it all rolled around, 
Then I'm going to drain out the excess. And to drain out the excess, I like to use a one cup measuring cup that I have sprayed with the uh, vegetable oil spray. And then I just set it over the cup and let the excess sugar drain out. And once that stops draining out, you can take a spatula or even a toothpick and clean up the edge so you don't have a big lip there on your the bottom of your bottle. But now I have to decide whether I want to let it firm up with the opening down or the opening up. Uh, if you don't have a torch, a cream light torch, I would twist, turn it over and let it firm up with the opening up and get a nice clean edge here. However, if you have a cream light torch, you can let it firm up with the opening down, set on a silicone mat, and um, that way you'll get less drip backs. So now with the opening on the bottom sitting on the silicone mat, I'm going to put this in the freezer. And with it sitting with the opening on the bottom, it takes about 20-25 minutes for it to firm up. I've removed the mold from the freezer and I'm going to take off the rubber bands here. lay down the mold and just start working it up gently and you can seal it with this nice translucent mold you can see it start to peel away I'll see if I point it towards the camera so you can see where it starts peeling away you can see it start changing color inside there I'm going to do this gently so you don't put pressure on it and break it There, I've got one half of it unmolded. And then for the second half, I usually lay it down and I will kind of pull away the sides from it so that it doesn't pull on it hard when I'm taking it out. So then I've loosened it as much as I can. And then I just gently sort of want to peel it out of there. And there you have your three-dimensional sugar bottle.